Hello YouTube, this is Wheatbox 55A1, a handheld 8-bit computer I designed and built. If you're familiar with my work, you might be asking yourself, why isn't this a duo computer? On the outside, this device doesn't look like much. It uses many of the same parts as in previous duo computers. However, the software represents a big paradigm shift in my homebrew computer projects. This is the first computer to run Wheat System, an operating system which I've been working on for the past three years. To understand what Wheat System is, we should first consider the software in Duo computers. Whenever I built a Duo computer, such as the Duo Adept or Duo Travel, I wrote an ad hoc operating system for each one. These Duo operating systems provided just enough functions to run their own applications. However, an application on one computer was incompatible with every other computer. If I wanted to run the same application on multiple platforms, I would have to rewrite the source code of the application for each operating system. The idea of one operating system to rule them all began to form in my head. If I designed an operating system the right way, all of my homebrew computers could run the same application seamlessly. I named this operating system Bread System, which is the ancestor of Wheat System. In a conventional operating system, each application contains machine code, which can only be executed by one family of processor. This limits the hardware platforms on which each application can run. I wanted applications in Bread System to use some kind of hardware neutral code for ultimate portability. I decided to design a bytecode for all applications in Bread System. A bytecode is similar to machine code in that it has a binary representation, so it's easy for computers to parse. However, bytecode isn't executed directly by the processor. Instead, it must be interpreted or compiled just in time by a runtime environment. This means any computer can run a bytecode application as long as it includes the correct runtime environment. To match the bread theme, I named my bytecode bread bytecode. As part of the bread system specification, all distributions of the operating system are able to run bread bytecode applications. I also needed to decide upon a memory model for bread system. In a conventional operating system, each process has its own virtual address space, which is mapped to physical memory. To share data, processes must make system calls or set up special shared memory regions. Since most of my homebrew computers don't have dedicated hardware to accelerate memory mapping, I could afford to use a more creative memory model in Bread System. I decided that all processes should run in the same address space with a unified heap. The operating system would manage heap memory allocation and garbage collection for all applications. Processes would be able to share heap allocations by simply passing pointers to each other. However, this approach comes with safety risks. A bad actor would be able to spy on or tamper with the memory of all other applications. As a result, I designed a permission system for Bread System to enforce memory safety. Under the permission system, an application could only access a heap allocation if the owner granted permission to do so. The permission system would be enforced by the bread bytecode runtime environment. I got pretty far in creating the bread system specification, and I even made an assembler to generate bread bytecode. However, I started to suspect that bread system was becoming too complex. I wanted my operating system to run on simpler hardware, which includes 8-bit microcontrollers and TTL processors. Given my experience with these platforms, I got the sense that the bells and whistles of Bread System would occupy too much memory. This suspicion ended up being correct, as the firmware of Wheatbox 55A1 uses about 90% of available space. In addition, it would take a lot of work to implement Bread System. I wanted to iterate on a design quickly so that I could learn what works and what doesn't. I pivoted on my design and planned a new operating system named Wheat System. This operating system shares many features with Bread System, including a bytecode runtime environment, a unified heap, and a permission system. However, I simplified many aspects of the design. 
In the file system, I dropped support for directories and softlinks. In the bytecode, I dropped support for floating point numbers in 64-bit integers. In the memory model, I dropped support for automatic garbage collection. And in the permission system, I dropped support for granularity beyond admin permission. While I knew I would miss these features, I had to let them go in the interest of my project goals. After drafting the Wheat system specification, I created a Wheat bytecode assembler. Thankfully, I could reuse the code I wrote in the Bread bytecode assembler. Then I began implementing the Wheat system kernel in C to run on an ATmega328 microcontroller. I wrote the code in such a way that it could also run on my personal computer, which was very helpful for testing and debugging. I wrote a suite of over 180 automated tests which could run on my PC in just a few seconds. Each test works by writing some files to a volume, booting Wheat system, and validating the output of bytecode instructions. These tests gave me the confidence that Wheat system was working properly every time I changed the kernel source code. Once I finished the Wheat system kernel, it was time to start writing bytecode applications. Since Wheat System supports concurrently running programs, I wrote a shell which can display windows to the user and switch between them. Wheatbox 55A1 has a small screen, so only one window can fit at a time. By pressing the System Menu button, you can select which window you want to view or close. Next, I wrote a file manager which allows the user to perform common file operations. These include launching applications, viewing file information, and deleting files. Then I wrote a handful of demo applications to test out Wheat system. This first application generates sequential prime numbers. This is often the first program I test on my computers because it's easy to write. To demonstrate multitasking on Wheat system, I can return to the system menu and launch the Hangman application. This is a pretty standard implementation but all of the answers are Wheat System themed. After I finish Hangman, I can switch back to the window which was generating prime numbers. You can see that it was running in the background the whole time. This next application is a calculator which supports the four arithmetic operators and parentheses. As I mentioned earlier, Wheat bytecode does not have instructions for floating point numbers. However, I was still able to implement floating point arithmetic in this calculator by expressing the significant and exponent as integers, and writing bytecode logic to manipulate those components. Next, I'll show the small RPG I wrote for Wheat System. The premise is that you have to adventure into a cave to find treasure, while fighting enemies along the way. The game features health, experience, and leveling systems like you would find in a traditional RPG. In order to generate random numbers, the system requires the user to seed a random number generator. The seed depends on which key the user pressed and the exact timing. Lastly, I made a text editor and a hex editor for Wheat System. These applications allow the user to edit ASCII text files and binary files respectively. With the hex editor, you can even write a whole bytecode application on the system and run it. Here, I write a bytecode application to create a window and display the word hello. Of course, this is impractical, but I still love the idea of writing a program on the same device which runs the program. Although the first version of the Wheat system specification and implementation are complete, there's still a lot of toolchain I want to develop. For starters, I would like to write the Wheat system kernel in a better programming language than C. When writing the kernel, I found that C wasn't expressive enough to verify several data type relationships. These included generic types and macro signatures. I've already designed my own systems programming language named Tractor and began implementing a compiler. After I finish the compiler, I plan to port the Wheat System kernel to Tractor. I would also like to design a higher level language which compiles into Wheat bytecode. I used Wheat bytecode assembly language to write all of the demo applications in this video, which was a real pain in the behind. It would also be nice to port the assembler and compiler to run within Wheat system. 
Then I'd be able to develop wheat system applications without relying on a regular old computer. Eventually, I do want to implement bread system, but that won't be happening for a while. First, I want to build more computers which run wheat system and bring out the full potential of the operating system. If you're curious to learn more about wheat system, please check the links in the description of this video. I have some pretty thorough documentation, and you can try out the emulator on Linux or macOS. That's all I have to show for now. Thanks for watching!